All right, welcome back, everybody. This is the Zim's Video Journal, episode 59. And this is actually my second attempt at recording this. Hopefully it'll work out, because uh, my camera just stopped and didn't say the video right. So, here we go. Round two for you. But it's round one, actually. So, anyways, it's uh, Video Journal, episode 59, like I said. And I feel like it's a little crooked. Is it a little crooked? I don't know. Maybe I just made it worse. But, um... W-O-T-S, the podcast this last week was episode 30, or version 30, with with Tim Noah, singer-songwriter slash folk singer type of person that's um, residing out of Snohomish right now. It was a really great interview. I really enjoyed it. Um, the only thing I really wanted to mention about the process of doing it was during that day, I had um, I recorded the Matt Ashworth one earlier that same day, and then I went up and did the one with Tim Noah later in the same day. And I really feel like having doing doing two back to back like that really helped feel comfortable quicker. And I really I don't know I just felt like that Tim Noah one and the Matt one they were both that they both felt really professional I guess in a way you could say just like it just felt at ease you know and and having done the mat one first and that was such a great one and then going and talking to tim just the way the conversation flowed really really worked well for me so I'm, i felt good about that hopefully you enjoyed it too i'd love to hear what you think of them you know please rate review and subscribe to them on itunes and all that good stuff um yeah and so there's that and then um I got the open mic. My open mic's doing good. I haven't yet to post the video from last week, but I'm gonna be doing that. And just on the open mic topic, I almost had to find a sub for this week, but um, it looks like things are gonna work out. I've been um so like just on like Friday, I found out that I'm gonna have the kids that had my own, my kids on Monday through Monday night and for the beginning of next week, um, and I was a little stressed out. Like I've been um, kind of a uh, stressed out and kind of depressed in a way this this weekend and I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that the my kids schedule and trying to work it out and make sure I could find coverage for them for the days when I'm at work and then also find coverage for when I'm at the open mic so I really wanted to continue to do that make sure I, I'm able to do that because really enjoy it for one thing and then I um I get paid for it so it really helps you know the little bit I get paid for actually helps my bank my flow my cash flow of my personal finances a lot actually so and to not get to not be able to make that money on Monday would have um, affected my immediate kind of cash flow which would have kind of been sucky so I'm glad it seems to be working out um, just right before I recorded this video I just finally got like the last kind of piece of the puzzle worked out so there's still a little bit to work out but I think it's all gonna be fine so I'm a little, I feel a little more relaxed and a little less stressed at this moment than I was for most of the weekend. And I think it kind of snowballs into my next um, topic that I wanted to talk about. And I, so Saturday night, last night, I didn't go out to any shows and I had, you know, the opportunity to because I didn't have my kids and it would have been easy to go out. But I was feeling really just burnt, um, uh, just tired. And, and, you know, it's, A, it was a hot, it's been hot in Seattle, so... That plays a factor, but just stressed out and kind of, you know, not, just not feeling that great. So I didn't go out to any shows and I felt, actually felt really guilty about that, you know, because A, because I'm trying to, you know, it's like I posted something on Facebook, like how can I expect people to come support me if I don't go support them? And I, you know, I guess I should, I need to let that go because A, I do support the scene a lot as you hopefully know by now with the with the podcast and with these video journals and with everything I do online I put a lot of um, effort and attention into the scene so um, I need to find a way to let the kind of the guilt aspect of not supporting it go when I can't or when I'm just not feeling that energized and it was a noticeable thing for me last night just like feeling like I uh, am letting down the what I'm trying to create as a big picture. So, I don't know. I just wanted to tell you that. Um, there's not really much else to say, but um, thanks for joining. And please, you know, go to the podcast and subscribe to it. Go to the Facebook. Give the band page, um, the Zimini Rock, a like. Oh, um, 
Oh, I forgot to mention. There's one thing I forgot to mention. Because I this, like I said, this is the second time I'm recording this, so I'm. But this week I went and um, yesterday, Saturday during the day, I went down and met up with a fella named Glenn Smith, who interviewed me, which was really cool because he reached out to me through Facebook, and um, said he wanted me to a critique one of his one of his interviews that he already did. I guess it was maybe his first one. I'm not sure. It's the only one I know of. And then he wanted to interview me, so we worked it out. I went down and met with him on Saturday. We talked for a couple hours. So he'll be posting that sometime soon, hopefully, but I'm not sure when. But it was just it just felt really good to to be on the other side of that conversation. And because of the work I'm doing with the podcast, because he's, from what I understand, he's trying to improve his skills as an interviewer and do more of that kind of stuff. He's really into journalism and things like that. So and he's a musician, local musician. So it was just, he reached out to me and he, I guess he saw what I was doing with Word on the Street and, and um, thought I would be a good person to talk to. So I hope it worked out for him. It sounds like he did. He, he enjoyed it. And when he posts the um, the full interview, I'll let you know where where to find it because I'm excited to listen to it too to see just how it, how it played out, how it came out. But um. But yeah, so that was really cool to have happen. Just uh, a manifestation of something generating from the work that I'm doing with Word on the Street. And I got to talk about the Zim and A-Rock and things like that. So that was really cool. So anyways, I'll leave it at that. Um, that's the, my week. Like I said, I'm kind of being a little, you know, not all that excited this weekend. But uh, but yeah, that's where I'm at. The, the life and times of the Zim, right? Um, so thanks for joining. Be sure to Check out all the links that I'm going to post with this video in the description. The podcast especially, go go check that out. Rate, review, and subscribe it on the iTunes or the Stitcher. That would be great. Um, I also, oh, I guess that reminds me of one other thing. I, I signed up for another podcast kind of um, aggregate. I don't know what you call them, but another service in a way. It's called Spreaker. Um, kind of like Speaker, but, but with an R in there, Spreaker. Um, and it's a service that you, you can actually use, you can pay for the service to host your, it sounds like to host your podcast. Like if you're a starting, if you're a budding podcaster and you don't have your own website or something, sounds like it's a place that you can sign up for their service, host it, upload your, your audio, and then they'll push it out to different sources. Like one of the sources that they connect with is iHeartRadio. And that's the main reason I started using it. But it turns out that if you don't pay for the service, you only get a limited amount of space that it'll hold. Like, And even though it's linking to my podcast that's on the blogger, I guess it imports the audio into their service. So it's a little confusing. It's a little... It's interesting to me that um, they would they would limit you that way when there are free services out there. So I guess they really want to drive you. They really want to funnel you into using their service as a paid service, which is understandable. They're a business and they want to do that. But I guess since there's like, like um, ways to do this for free or very, very cheaply. Otherwise, like I pay nowadays, I pay like six, basically $6 a month for my internet. Some, hosting service and that's where my that's like basically all I have to pay pay for um, with hosting the podcast is my where I host the zim.com and then everything else outside of that bloggers free you know um, um, stitchers free iTunes is free everything's free other than that first six dollars a month for the hosting so it just I don't know it just I find it interesting that that they're um, using the model of limiting the amount of um, space you're allowed to use and, until you buy it, which, you know, it's, it's okay. I mean, whatever. I don't know. Um, but it's up there now. It's called Spreaker, and maybe it'll drive maybe more traffic. Maybe the Spreaker community will see what we're on the streets doing, and they'll get interested in it, and then they'll find it on iTunes and other places like that because I have to basically every time I post one it sounds looks like I have to delete like the last one off of their site so that it always has room so the current content's always up um so anyways that's it that's just kind of a random 
video journal. But thanks for watching video journal episode 59 with Zim in the closet studio. And be sure, like I said, to visit all the links that I'll post. Love it if you checked out the music, the podcast, the band, all that good stuff. So until next time, I'm the Zim.